Hey everybody, welcome back again. Today I wanna to show you six or so of the core principles I use to start getting kind of weird in Excel and using these fun designs that you see in all the templates that I share. This is 100% out of the box Excel. There's no custom coding, there's no custom templates, anything, we're just using standard Excel features to build this stuff. And I think that's really important because I want anyone to be able to do it. And I think oftentimes we think Excel is a lot more limited than it actually is. But the reality is it's just as easy to do this in Excel as it is in really like any other tool. So let's just jump right into it. For this example, I'm just using some sample data. This came straight from Microsoft. I think it's Power BI sample data and just breaking down sales across product categories. Nothing fancy here. And then I'm using that to generate a series of pivot tables. And what you'll notice is that in a lot of these pivot tables, we have the same data twice. Count of sales, one, two, three, four different times. And that's because it's one of the core principles for starting to create some of these fun, creative visuals. For example, if you want an area chart, but you want to give it a line that looks more like a standard line, instead of one that wraps around the entire shape, it has to be two separate data series. So here we have our sales data twice. One is a standard line chart, the other is an area chart. Now, when you insert a line chart and you have two separate lines, they're gonna be stacked right on top. And all you're gonna do is click the one on top, go up to your design tab, go to change chart type, and change one of them to an 2D area chart. You may have to change the order of your series after this, depends on whether you're using a pivot chart or not. And then what you can do is separately style your area chart. So this area chart has the nice gradient and your line, this line is stacked on top of it essentially. And some of the fun stuff in this is just how we can style it and make it look more visually interesting. So when you drop a chart in, it's going to look something like this. And for our regular viewers, you'll have seen some of this before, but I'll go quick. Don't worry. First thing I do is I just drop out my background. Any of my unnecessary elements, I either delete, you can just hit delete to cl click into them, hit delete to remove them, or I will sometimes just tone them down. So I might change the transparency here. And instead of having a bright, super, super bright line, I might make it a little more subtle, or I might even make it dashed using some of these options in here. You get all the stuff out of the way that you don't want, and then you get yourself familiarized over here with our formatting tab. This is where a lot of the really good stuff lives. So the first thing first is I tell people, explore your other fill options. For this line, we made this look cool by using a gradient. This is a 90 degree gradient, top to bottom, from a lighter blue to a darker blue, and it really adds visual interest. It makes a big difference. Getting good at using gradients can be a little tricky, but the number one tip I give this to everyone is keep it subtle. Go from a light blue to a slightly darker blue or from a light blue to a light green. Don't go from a blue to a bright red or something like that. Keep it subtle at first. And to dial it in, play with your transparency wheel down here and your brightness wheel. And if you play with both of those on either side of your gradient, you should be able to get it looking good. I've also used a smooth line here. I don't suggest you use smooth lines, but people love them for some reason. They just can be a little misleading. They make your data look like it has more granularity than it actually does. But you have the option and the the cool thing here is what lives under this tab here. We have the option for shadows and glows and soft edges and 3D formatting. And we're gonna be using a lot of that to create some of these visual effects. In this case, we've given our line a glow in a light blue, about 17 point size and about 78, 80% transparency. And we have this cool neon line. And it's the kind of thing somebody would never guess was made in Excel if they saw this. And it's just cause we never think to look into these sections and learn how to customize things using these features. And that's really the first step in all of this is just getting familiarized with the options you have available to you because most people don't even know they're there. With charts, this is a big one in the add chart element tab. Go through these different options and explore what's there because we have great options in here for adding in features you might not have known were available for your charts. Then for each element of your chart, you can right click it and go into the format data series uh, option and look at what your customization options are in here. So one of them is fills. Now we talked a little bit about using gradient fills before, but what if we use an image fill? That's what we've done here to create this cool column effect. I used another tool over here to just do a little design for this to use as our bar fill. And then I have designed another separate little rectangle for our marker. That's what we've used in this chart. And we've created this cool effect. So what this essentially was when I first created it was this, a bar chart and a line chart. But using those principles we talked about, I hid the line, made the marker really big over here with our marker settings. I think I made it like maybe a 60 point width or something. Let's see, something like that. Chose a fill for the marker that was a picture or texture. And all I did for that was use the image from my little design tool, copied it, went over here and under the picture or texture fill option, I just hit clipboard and it added it in. Click the bar behind, did the same thing. And of course, removed our background, removed our outlines, all the extra elements. And before you know it, 
we got this cool chart for this crazy neon line. I did something kind of similar to what we saw before where I used multiple series. So for this one, I used four different series that were all the exact same data over and over again. And in each one, I gave it a gradient fill, exact same gradient each time, but I just made it slightly more transparent on each layer and slightly larger on each layer. So our original line is about a four point width and then it jumps up to maybe a 15 point width and then about a 30 or 40 point width and then a 70 point width, each time getting more transparent each step of the way. And we get this cool, crazy, squiggly neon look. Another way to think about this is that we can expand the capabilities built in charts that are already there. So what I've got here is a regular old donut chart. Getting a little creative with the donut chart, we can expand it. And in this case, we've kind of turned it into a progress chart. And the way we did this was pretty simple, actually. Easier than you might expect. We got our three categories that we're making progress on. We have the progress we've made towards our goal as a percent. And then we just have one minus this value next to it. And what that's gonna do is give us a series that we can use for the progress and then a separate series that'll fill in the rest of it. So this would be our 25%. This would be one minus 25%. This one is something like 60%. This is one minus 60%. And then we just clicked into each of our series and we're able to edit each part individually. And this is one of the cool parts of Excel is that it allows us to fine tune specific parts in so much detail. So in this case, I gave this segment a nice gradient, if the other one a slightly different gradient, etc. And then all of the progress areas, I just clicked into those. I gave them a white fill that's like 90% transparent. That just creates a nice little masked area here that it looks like it's filling in. And I gave the whole thing a border outline that matches our background color. And I gave the whole thing a nice little glow just to make it look fancy, why not? You put all that together, you get a progress chart. And now there are a million ways you can reuse the charts you have to essentially create new chart types that might not have been there in the first place. I've got a bunch of other videos that go into all of these different options, but there's there really are a lot of them. And if you just get a little creative with it, you can do some pretty cool stuff this way. The other element to all of this outside of your charts is just getting familiarized with all of the other design options in here. So if we go to our insert tab, this area is our best friend. It's where we find shapes. These can make a huge difference in your designs. You can add in imagery. That's another thing that can make a huge difference. Icons, 3D models, all the stuff's available. So when we start combining these things, you can create these really, really cool effects that you wouldn't otherwise be able to create, right? This is just a rounded rectangle. We give it a little outline and a light blue. We give it a little glow, made the fill color match our background. We've got this cool little glowy bounding box or this little separator is just a rectangle, no outline and a gradient going from like a light blue to our background background color to create this little glowy separator in between. There's a million ways you can use this, right? But I think the idea is just getting familiarized with the fact that this stuff is all there and then starting to play with it and starting to experiment with it. And a really good way to do this is using the PowerPoint method. I've talked about this a lot, but all of the interface for controlling this stuff works the same as PowerPoint and it's totally interoperable with PowerPoint. So you can copy paste your PowerPoint elements in here and start playing with them and adjusting them. And it's the exact same controls. It all works the exact same way way and that can open up a lot of possibilities for people. So just try it out, see what you can do, have fun with it, and you'd be really surprised at how capable Excel is at enabling us to do this kind of stuff. Like you can create some really neat things with it. Anyway, hope that helps everybody. Thanks so much. I'll probably send all these out on the newsletter at some point. There'll be a link for that below if you want it. I'm also, I've got all of the templates up listed for sale on there as well. If folks just want to buy a single one and they don't want to like wait for stuff to get sent out on the newsletter, all of that's available over there. So yeah, hope that helps. Have a good one. Bye for now, folks.